smile on my face? Do you see that smile on my face? We have full crew back in the house. I'm so excited. We have full crew back in the house and we have a wonderful, wonderful guest that I jerked out of the pulpit out of First Baptist Church, Mike Smith. You came and visited us while Jeff was doing, was it a revival he was doing? He was at a reunion, I think, oh, up in North was. Georgia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so he was away and asked me to fill in and it was, I was blessed to do it. Oh man, and you, you, you hit it out of the park. You were a baseball player in college. <laughs> True, that's right. <laughs> you yeah. hit it out of the park. You delivered a great message and I shared a little bit on our program last week. I loved it because it kind of gives us all ideas. We think we want to do this, we think we want to do that, but we kind of sway along in the boat and we forget to get out on the water. Exactly. And your yeah. message was that, and it was really, really cool. So I'm excited about it. We're going to do a little bit of stuff before Mike and I get started, but I, I want you to tune in, pick up the phone, call your neighbors, call your friends, and say you're going to like this guy today because I can guarantee you he will make an impression on you. When we were sitting in church, I just thought, this is a message I needed to hear, but I got to give you a compliment. The best music we've had at First Baptist in a long time because he chose the music. <laughs> That's right. I understand That's the right. songs were your choice. He let me pick them. Yeah. Well, Jeff, you ought to do that more often I because just... I love Jeff. I love it, love it, love it. They, I, I grew up in First Baptist churches. I grew up in the big churches. But we sang more of the traditional old hymns than we do at First Baptist Ball Grant. And I'm not sure what the deal is. We always did Softly and Tenderly. We always did uh, Up From the Grave. We always did the songs that we all know the words to. That's and right. when you chose, I knew the words to everything you chose. Oh, I was yeah. so excited, y'all. Oh, yeah. I was, I was so excited, excited too. <laughs> It I was loved awesome. It. it was awesome. I loved it. You nailed it on the music. Good job. Good job. Know. And you nailed it on the message. So we're going to talk about that in a minute. But I have some photos that I want to share with y'all. Ansley keeps looking at, Z at Zana and saying, who does she look like? Well, duh, she looks just like her mama. So we're going to show you pictures of Ansley as a baby, as a preemie in the neonatal unit at Crawford Long, where her mom actually, they lost her on the table. She lost 11 units of blood. They, my pastor was standing there to tell me that they had lost my daughter. The good Lord saw fit to bring her back. And the amazing doctors at Crawford Long, she got blood transfusions, she came back. And then there Ansley was in the neonatal unit for about four months. And now Ansley has just delivered Zana. And when you look at Zana and you look at Ansley, they look a whole lot alike. Um, she also looks like her dad. And, and uh, sadly, her dad passed away a few months ago. He had uh, severe diabetes and um, his heart gave out. So, so Ansley's gonna be doing this as a single mom. And she's doing a really, really good job. And I'm really proud of her. And I love the idea that she just dotes on this child. And she doesn't want it in a car seat. She doesn't want it in a car. Don said, you gotta take her to the doctor. I don't wanna put her in a car. I don't wanna risk it. I don't wanna do this. So she's, she's doing everything that I would hope she would do but we're excited about that new baby. Now, this weekend, I was blessed with a bunch of blackberries to can, and I did that. And if you have not canned lately, I'm gonna suggest that you get some fall apples and you make yourself some apple butter or some apple sauce and you get in the kitchen. There's something therapeutic about canning. It's hard work, but when you finish the product and you see those beautiful blackberries canned or that beautiful blackberry syrup that I made and I nailed it, thank goodness, because I kept messing with it, messing with it, messing with it. And I just kept messing with it and I thought, this is not gonna work. Well, it finally, I cooked it down and cooked it down and cooked it down and it was perfect. So, and I'll tell you what I did with it. I sampled it over cornbread. Does that sound crazy, y'all? But it was so good. It was so good. I just drizzled it on the cornbread, and oh my gosh. So if you are coming up to RNA Orchards and you want to get yourself some apples, ask them what's good for canning apples. And can yourself some apple butter, some apple sauce, um, and have it for the winter, because when winter hits, you're going to be saying, I wish I had something really cool out of my own pantry. So get out there and learn how to can. It's a lot of fun and it's interesting. So now today, we're only gonna feature one song today because Mike and I are gonna spend a lot of time talking about this, which I think is amazing because I like short stories. 
Not that I can't keep my mind focused on a book. I can't keep my mind focused on a book, y'all. <laughs> but I can read short stories. And Mike, you compiled this of over maybe 300 short stories? Well, that's 344 stories. Wow, and true stories, everything in it? Personal experiences, uh, life lessons mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that I experienced. Life is a lesson or a blessing? Exactly. I've had a lot of lessons lately. Oh, have I had a lot of lessons <laughs> lately? Okay, in my life, in my life and in the life of my family, God keeps showing up. There were times when I could not sense his presence. I could not see him or hear him. In those times, I kept asking the question, where's God? When the storm was over, when I came out of the valley, when I looked back, I could see that God had been with me the entire way. Just because I couldn't sense him or feel him or hear him did not mean that he was not with me. <clears throat> that should have been my statement <laughs> because through the last 15 months, I knew that without God with me, wouldn't be sitting here today would never have made it. Mm. And God shows up sometimes in weird forms. Sometimes exactly. he shows up in a new friend who makes you laugh. Sometimes he shows up in an old memory of a grandmother and you're right. just like canon. I get in the kitchen and I think about my granny. You're right, exactly. You know, God shows up in weird times and you're like, okay, God, I get it. Mm -hmm. I know it was you. Yeah. I know it was you. Yeah. So when I read this, um, and I'm excited to get to read it, I, I have a special porch that I sit on a lot. And I love sitting there and it's just kind of my chilling time. This is gonna be my read because I don't have to remember anything. I read a one page short story. I love that. Right, it's quick, it's <laughs> I quick. I love it, I love it, I love it. Now, who encouraged you to do this? I used to put uh, spiritual quotes on Facebook because I had a journal and I would write them down and I thought, well, I'll share them. And then I started putting personal stories and somebody said, well, that's good. Why don't you keep doing that? So I did. And uh, December 2019, I started putting one on every day. Mm -hmm. And I've done that until today. I still do it every day on Facebook and I send them out as emails. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, why don't you put it in a book? And I said, well, I don't know how to do a book. And mm -hmm. they said, well, you ought to do it. So I have a friend who'd published several books. He turned me on to someone who helped me and my daughters helped me. And so we made a book out of all those uh, stories. Mm -hmm. And. Is it a local publisher? Is that, how do you? Well, it went through Amazon, so you can purchase it on Amazon mm -hmm. and uh, get it there. I have books at the house that I can also sell, mm -hmm. but it went through Amazon and uh, they were the publishers for it. And process it simple enough that anybody could do it? I think so. I mean, if I can do it, anybody <coughs> can do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's for sure. Uh, I just had to gather all my stories together, put some pictures in there, and then come up with a title, which one of my daughters came up with, God mm -hmm. Keeps Showing Up, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's exactly right. And then, the, and I gotta show this photo because that's actually of y'all's backyard. That's the backyard taken from my uh, camera. I have phone. been to their backyard and it might, I just might add, it is fantastic. It's looking to a west Pine Log Mountain that way it's toward fantastic. the west. And uh, wow. just God gave us a beautiful, you know, sunset that night. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So. And I hope that everybody will pick up a copy. God keeps showing up. And, and honestly, if you have gone through the trials, the tribulations, the tragedy, and you made it, God was there. There's no doubt about it. Exactly. I mean, when we look at it, he's, he's ne we've never been alone. Mm -mm. We mm -mm. may think mm -mm. we are, but we've never been alone. Well, I want to ask you to do something right now because I have, if I wrote down the list of my friends that are hurting, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm thinking about Cindy and Selena and Danny and, and the people that are fighting health issues that just buried a child, the, the folks that have broken relationships and, and Satan shows up mm -hmm. and, and Satan seeks to destroy that that is good. Exactly. So will you please take a few minutes and let's do a prayer for that? I'd be glad to. There you go. Father, we just thank you that we can come before you at any time, you're always there. And first off, we want to praise you for who you are, Father. You're Jehovah Jireh, you provide. Jehovah Rapha, Father, you heal. We ask that you'd forgive us of our sins to begin with. As far as the east is from the west, you tell us that in Psalm 103. And Father, we lift up all the ones that Sherry is talking about because we all have people hurting, Father. People that have lost loved ones in tragic ways. People that are sick, people that are dying and we don't want to let them go, Father, and we don't understand why bad things happen to good people. 
But we know you're in charge, and we know, Father, that one day you'll make all things right. But for this time and this season that we're going through, would you be with them, each family that's hurting? You come along with the heartbroken and the brokenhearted. You tell us that in, in, in Psalms 34, 7. So I just lift them up, Father, and that you, in accordance with your will, bring about healing in their body. If it be in accordance with your will, be with all the physicians and doctors, all those that are attending to them, that you'd bring about healing on this earth. But if not, if they go on to be with you, I pray, God, you'd be with each family. You'd give them a comfort and peace that only you can give. I ask that you'd be with each family out there, Father. Be with each one of us. Thank you for Sherry, for her ministry. I pray, God, that we always put you first in everything that we do. And everything that we do, we give you honor and praise because it's all about you and it's not about us. And we ask all those things in the precious name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. You know, I was telling you earlier, we used to have Tuesday. It was Inspirational Tuesday. And right. I would have a different pastor um, on Tuesdays. And then COVID hit and things changed and um, lately because it's been a little bit scary. A lot of people have had COVID. And two weeks ago, I knew 20 people had COVID. Then the next week, I knew 26 people who had right. COVID. So it's been a little bit risky and right. we've been cautious. And I laughed because I had a lady, uh, she was doing evangelist work and she was going to be on with me. And I was a nervous wreck about being around her because she'd preached all over the Southeast. Okay. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she's going to bring COVID in the studio and I'm going to end up sick again. And I was just all stressed. Well, we're sitting in there ready to get ready for the show. And my phone rings and she had an emergency and she couldn't be here. I guarantee you she was diagnosed with COVID. Oh. And, and I just laughed and I said, God did protect me because I was so stressed about it. That's God. And I have been so cautious because I had COVID. I survived COVID, but we know a lot of people who didn't survive COVID. That's right. Yeah. My producer from Atlanta that I absolutely adored and was probably the best friend I've ever had in my whole life. Um, he died because he took the shot and it threw his heart out oh, and it killed him. And he told his sister, he said, I wish I hadn't listened and I wish I hadn't had that shot and I wish I hadn't done it. Mm -hmm. But it, two days later, he passed away. Oh, so we've all lost friends. We've lost loved ones. But we do understand that his timing is perfect. Amen. Do you ever scratch your head and go, really, God? I do a lot because, you know, in the scripture it says his ways are not our ways, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, his thoughts are not our thoughts. So we don't understand. Mm -mm. And, and we, we don't. And we won't understand this side of heaven. Mm -mm. And I think when we get to heaven, maybe look back if God allows it, we'll see, well, that happened because of that and that mm -hmm. happened because of that. We've got just a piece of the puzzle. We don't have the whole picture. Mm -hmm. God's got to cover the box. We don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we just have to trust him, you know. Wow. Wow, and sometimes, sometimes you're like, okay, if, if God was real, a young man wouldn't have died Saturday when somebody hit his truck from the rear, it exploded, he died, he leaves behind a young widow, two young children, a deaf child, and the widow doesn't even speak English, and how will she provide for this family? So how is God in that picture? How do you explain that to somebody? You really can't. You can't really explain it, but you can say you've got to trust God because he's in control. Mm -hmm. And even a bad situation like that, even a bad situation, he can make good out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the worst day in the history of the world was when we killed the creator of the world mm -hmm. on a cross. That's the mm -hmm. worst day. Mm -hmm. But three days later, that was the best day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in Absolutely. the history of the world. Yep. Yep. So he made good out of something bad. And and even though a tragic thing like that and the accident, we can't see anything good, but God somehow, some way will make something good out of it. It may so. be on down the road. Mm -hmm. We may not see it. And, and our prayers, and many times our prayers, our prayers don't die. We may die, but our prayers keep getting answered even after we're gone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Well, this, this young woman, I, I, was, I told Evelyn, I said, what can we do for her? What can we do? Because literally, she she is left alone in a in a country that you know he was providing for the family he was the sole provider right. there she is there she is and so right. we have to reach out to her and we have to make a difference we have to be god's arm of strength exactly exactly i mean we've got to put uh, feet on the prayers and we can't just say be warm and filled mm -hmm. we go and we do things physically to help them right you know right. as well as spiritually 
Right. You know. Can we talk a little bit about something that's going on in ball ground? And, and I'm so proud of Dominic. I love him. Oh, yeah. I love him. Yeah. For people who don't know, you know, in a time of tragedy and, and trauma and, and all the COVID doing what it did to America and all the people saying they can't work, <clears throat> there are a lot of people who truly can't work. And there are people who do need a hand out and a, and a hand up. Right. And, and Dominic has formed a, a great ministry. He does. He, he feeds 150 people every week. Mm -hmm. And Diane and I have become a part of that, that mission. And it's just so exciting for us. We take out, last Saturday, we took out uh, food, groceries mm -hmm. for, uh, for 12 families. Mm -hmm. And it's just such a blessing to help them out because we're here to serve others. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about us. It's about helping others. And when we serve others, we serve Christ. So Dominic is just all about, he has a mission there where he has clothes people can come in. Mm -hmm. uh, they can get food there. We deliver food there. And he's just a, has a tremendous outreach in his ministry. Uh, every two weeks on Tuesday nights, he's opened up his restaurant for praise and worship time. Mm -hmm. Have a speaker there for 10 or 15 minutes, sing a lot of hymns, good songs, contemporary, have uh, worship time, and just a great time. So he is all about serving where God has placed him. And you know what's really cool about what he's doing? There are young people involved. Exactly. They're there are full. young people involved. Exactly. Yeah. And they're excited about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so the young people are coming around, the old folks like that, and I'm learning from them, and they're learning from me, and it's just a great relationship that he's developed there, mm -hmm. and it's growing every time we meet. Right. Now, if people want to donate to Dominic's, I know that it is a 5013C, so it's ta uh, non taxable. You can donate, you can write a check, you can give goods. Right. How, how do people get involved in that? Well, you can go to the website. He has a <coughs> website called Dominic's mission.com mm -hmm. and that's how I got involved with it you know we've eaten there for many many years and then I got to know him and then I said well I'd like to help out with the mission mm -hmm. and they say go to that website and mm -hmm. it'll take you to places if you want to donate if you want to volunteer it'll tell you there mm -hmm. at that website yeah such a heart, such a heart for people. Now, can we read one if, if you chose one story out of here that is your favorite do you have a favorite? <laughs> uh, boy, there's so many in there. Uh, I don't, uh, one of the longer ones, and, and we don't have time to read it, is when God healed my son when he had cancer. But oh, wow. That's a longer, Where is that's it? That's a longer read. Where is it? It's called Kelly's Story. It's probably up uh, near the front. Okay. It's probably. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah. Can you find it? Yeah, it's it's up near the front, but it's a. Uh, it's a long story, and that's so your the one. son gets a diagnosis of cancer. You're a pastor. Yeah, that's, that's that story. And you're right you're there. saving you're saving lives by bringing them to Christ, and then your son gets a. Yeah, uh, when he was four, it was a long time ago. Four he was years four old. Four years old. Wow. And uh, he came down with what the doctor said was a stomach <coughs> virus, mm -hmm. and uh, so it didn't get any better. We kept taking him back, and uh, two months he still, you know, has a stomach virus, losing weight, slow, listless, and we begged the doctor, you have to do more. And so Diane gave him a bath one night and she said, Mike, come here and look at this. And his, we could count every rib. We saw his stomach protruding like a child in a third world country. And so we said, you've got to keep trying. So they finally mm -hmm. called us in and said, we found something. So we went in there and they said, we found that uh, your son has a massive tumor on his liver. And I said, four you, years old, four years old. And I said, you tell me for two months, he had a stomach virus and for two months it's been growing. He said, I'm sorry. He said, you need to take him immediately down to Eggleston Children's Hospital and see the liver specialist down there. So mm -hmm. we were going to do that. And as we were driving back to get my son to do that, my parents were keeping him. I looked at Diane and I said, where's God? Mm -hmm. Where's God? And we had three healthy kids and now my son has cancer. Where's God? Mm -hmm. And I talk about that in the book because sometimes we can't sense him, we can't feel him, we can't hear him. Where is he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when we look back, we see him. But through all that, my pastor came. And when my pastor came, he got there in about 10 minutes. He and I and Diane went back in the back bedroom, got on our knees and prayed. And my pastor said, God, you tell us you'll never give us more than we can handle. But, but this is pretty close. He said, God, would you heal Kelly, my son, divinely? Or would you place it in his body where it could be treated? And we got up and we went down and Diane and my parents took Kelly down to Eggleston. My pastor and I went around and got all the different x-rays and tests around and it was a 
gray day near Christmas time. It was raining. They were having Christmas parties there, and I resented that. Mm -hmm. I said, don't be mm -hmm. smiling. I just yeah, found out Don't be son, celebrating. Don't yeah. celebrate. Yeah. I just found out my son has cancer. <clears throat> and I looked at my pastor, and I said, I know when I was at Georgia playing baseball my junior year, I was taking a religion course. And I thought, man, I love that course. Maybe God's calling me into the ministry. I said, but that feeling left, and I didn't go into the ministry. Maybe it didn't. Maybe this happened because I'm running from God. And my pastor said, Mike, that, uh, that feeling would never have left you if God was calling you. Mm -hmm. Then I said, well, then where's God? Mm -hmm. Well, then where's God? And we finally got down to the hospital. And then as we got to the hospital, Diane said, they've done other tests since you've been looking at all the other tests as you bringing them in. And they found out that it was not in his liver. It was in his kidney. And I thought of my pastor's prayer, God, would you move it? You got one liver and two kidneys. My sister just battled kidney cancer. And, and, I, and I believe with all my heart that God <coughs> moved it there. So the next day they did emergency surgery. That night I went into his restroom on my knees, tried to pray. I couldn't pray. No words would come to me, just groans. And Romans tells us many times when we can't pray and we just groan, the Holy Spirit interprets those prayers mm -hmm. to the Father because mm -hmm. he did that night. <coughs> and they, they came to get Kelly. And as they got him, my father said, you want me to put him on the stretcher? And I said, no, I'll do it. And I put him up there, and I felt like Abraham putting Isaac on, a, on an altar because I didn't know if I was going to get him back or not. Mm -hmm. And I had to let go of him, and I didn't have the faith of Abraham. So for four and a half hours, they operated, and they took a 2.2-pound .2 tumor out of the little guy along with his kidney. Wow. God had placed it there. Yeah. And a kidney is only one by two inches for a yeah. four-year-old. Yeah. So God had placed it there. It had not burst. If it had burst, it had been you know, cancer all over his body. Mm -hmm. So God was unable to put it there, encapsulate it, bring it out, and then he went through chemotherapy. He was able to play baseball and basketball, and today he's healthy with two kids of his own, and it was all God. It was all God. Wow. That is, that is so crazy because when my sister got the diagnosis with kidney cancer, they also found it in her lungs and her liver. And they took her in for a sonogram. They were going to operate. We had everybody in the world praying for her. Amen. And they went in, and the nurse said, wait just a minute. And she said, let me go get the surgeon. And they come back in there, and they said, we can't find the cancer that was in your liver and your um, lung. It's, we, it's not there now. And so then they went in, and they, she has a 10-inch incision where they took this huge mass with her kidney, and they said, the markers are all clean around it. There's no more cancer. <laughs> and she was God. like, she said, why did that happen to me? Why did God deliver me? Why didn't God deliver somebody else? Why did God bless me? Right. And I said, you just don't know. No, we yeah. don't know. We don't know. I mean, how did my pastor know to pray that prayer? I don't know. You know, James says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And he knew what to pray and when to pray, and God heard the prayer. Prayer is a powerful thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely, we absolutely. Just God. What a great testimony! Oh my gosh! Well, that's that's one of so the. So that has to be the best story in here. Well, to me, it's the one that touches <coughs> my heart and the one that I share as often as I can because it's it's all it was all God. Had they waited maybe another two weeks, it could have burst. It, I mean, exactly. the timing was God's timing. Exactly. It was yeah. emergency surgery when they found <coughs> out they to take it out. Mm -hmm. I mean, a 2.2 pound tumor, it was wow. larger than a softball and smaller than a volleyball. So it was, Gosh. could have burst at any time, mm -hmm. but God's hand was on him yeah. through yeah. prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, how cool mm -hmm. is that? Well, we're going to take a commercial break, and then we're going to go to a song that I just think is appropriate for today. I had never heard this song until last week, and I heard three old gentlemen that I just think the world of do this song. One of them was the lead singer on this, and he was singing a song that the two elderly gentlemen with him had never heard. But last week, I was playing it for a friend over in Kingston, Georgia, and I said, Peyton, have you ever heard this song? And Peyton sang along with it. And I said, how cool is that? Because this is one of those songs that you just go back to and you listen to every single word. And then you remember that if you have a problem or you're looking for a solution, it's in the Bible. The Amen. solution is in the Bible. Amen. So pick up your Bible. And this song talks a little bit about that. So we're going to do a song that... Um, it, it's so precious because when I looked and Vic Davis and Bobby Davis and Dwight were sitting there doing that song and I could see that it just touched all of them. So we want to share it with you again today. 
So right now. Welcome, folks, to the little cabin across from Ace in LJ, Georgia. Here's a song that my grandpa, Bill Sanford, used to sing. In church, I'd see him up there wearing that brown suit. He'd sing this song every Sunday. In the Bible, we read of a city with streets that are paved with pure gold. We'll live in that city. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meat, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? American Made Music Festival returns to Hiawassee, Georgia, September 15th through 17th. This three-day festival features the best of country, bluegrass, and gospel music, including special guests Craig Morgan, Lone Star, Ricky Skaggs, and Kentucky Thunder, Daly and Vincent. Stars and Stripes Forever, America. Three-day and single-day tickets available, along with on-site camping by the lake. The American Made Music Festivals with Daly and Vincent, presented by Gus Arendale and Springer Mountain Farms. 
United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. High-speed Wi-Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. back I'm encouraged I love that song I had never heard it until last week and I, I just in my mind I keep seeing this old country church and this little old preacher he was five foot I think Dwight said five foot six and he said all his life he thought his granddaddy was this eight foot giant because he looked up to him so much right. and then when he realized he was really just five six you know but he just he made such an impact on him Mike who made an impact on you early in life that made you be the kind of man you are well, my parents always led me the right way. I guess my mother and father would have been my, my role models. They always told me to do the right thing and showed me mm -hmm. the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got saved when I was 10 years old. So I, I, I found Christ, thankfully, at an early age. But I had a lot of coaches uh, in high school and uh, in places like that in college that helped me, that uh, always was a good role model for me mm -hmm. in areas like that because I've been involved in athletics all my all my life as a player and a coach. You know, it's sad to think about, but you know, a coach just won a case with the Supreme Court because he wasn't allowed to pray with his team. Right. Now, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that's fighting words. That yeah. He ought to be allowed to pray with his team any time he wants to. Well, exactly. But he had to go to the Supreme Court to get the right to do that. Well, I know uh, they asked me to coach a team. That's another area where my, my territory was enlarged was to ask to coach a baseball team in, in ball ground. Mm -hmm a nine-year-old team, and I coached those guys for six years, and we always prayed before the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Go out in right field and get on a knee and pray, and so it was, uh, that was a special time. And about mm -hmm. halfway through the first season, as I started to pray, one of the little boys says, Coach, I'll pray. And he wow. prayed, and he prayed, wow. and I thought, well, he's going to pray the Lord's Prayer, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, he prayed a beautiful prayer. I mean, better than mine, totally. He prayed for everybody, and I oh thought, my gosh. Boy, what a, he's touched me. You know, I tried yeah. to touch him. He's touching me. Yeah. And so God had placed me there, and, and I taught him baseball. I taught him about Jesus. So that was a special time. How cool is that? Oh, that was, that was really cool. How cool. You know, I think that's, we look at the world today, and, and um, there's some evil in this world. All around. There's a lot of evil. All around. And, and if everybody would band together and fight the evil, we could win because we've read the Bible and in the end, he does win. Amen. You know, but we give up so easily and we don't want to go to court. We don't want to go to trial. We don't want to face this. We don't want to cause a commotion. We don't, oh yeah, we do. Yeah, mm -hmm. we do. If it's right, it's right. If it's wrong, it's wrong. That's right. Yeah. 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 And that's where we blew it. Because we, oh, it'd be easier just to let it go. It'd be easier just to do, uh-uh, no. If it's worth being there and, and living and doing, it's worth fighting for. Well, it's a spiritual warfare. We need to pray on the armor of God every day. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're fighting against Satan and his demons and his principalities, you know. And so we need to put on that armor every day. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Because we're stronger than he is. You know, the, the Bible tells us that. You know, he that is in us is stronger than he that's in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the Holy Spirit who fills us. Yep. Fill yep. me each day for yep. the fight because I know it's going to be a fight. Yep. Do you remember the day that they took prayer out of schools? Uh, it was a sad day, but I don't know the exact day. No. Because I can remember Henry Grady High School in Atlanta. We started the day with a prayer, announcements, and, you know, everything. And there was no question about that. Exactly. We started the day with a prayer. Yeah. And then when that was removed from the school, and then the Ten Commandments were removed, and then this was, we're removing all the good stuff, and we're filling it with trash and garbage and yuck. Yeah. So, but we allowed that to happen. We didn't stop. We didn't stop Satan as they approached. Mm -hmm. And we said, oh, it'll be easier just to let him do it. I think one person, didn't it, started that mess? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a shame that one, you one know, changes it for everybody. Yeah, yeah. And that shouldn't be. But. In Jasper, if I'm not, I think I'm right, at the building that Ed Marger owns, I believe the Ten Commandments are still up on that mm -hmm. wall. Mm -hmm. And um, thank goodness that they are. You know, yeah. nobody made them remove that. But there were times that we were told, you cannot display the Ten Commandments on public property. You can't. And we allowed that to happen. I think God allows us to, to learn hard lessons when He says, if you don't want me around, if you want to remove me, I'll show you what's going to happen when that does. Mm -hmm. When that mm -hmm. happens, and look at what happened. You know, oh, yeah. when God goes out of the school, what goes in the school? Oh yeah. You know oh, yeah. the bad things, the mm -hmm. evil things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You take God away, it's it's not going to be good. Yeah, I was showing a piece of property yesterday, and and this is so weird because the other agent, there were dual showings on at the same time. The lady said, "Do you know what that is over there?" Da da da. I said, "No," and I said, "That's not our property." I said, "That's the property next door," and she said, "Well, those are containers that contained a chemical." that is either to uh, purify water or to make meth. And I thought, okay. Mm -hmm. And she said, do you know anything about the, I said, no, and again, it's not on our property. No, I don't know what it is. But we started, my daughter and I, and my daughter had a history of drug abuse for years, and then she became clean. And if you go to her house now, you're not getting drugs, you're getting Jesus, and you're getting a whole lot of Jesus. Amen. And so she and I started talking to kids in schools, and we would walk in with the contents of what it took to make meth. And when a third grader says, are y'all going to make meth today? You know mm -hmm. that the home life he had was not good. Yeah. And that's what's happening. The parents are, you know, my granddaddy made liquor. He made liquor to put food on the table. He didn't make liquor to get wealthy and he didn't make liquor to kill people. He made moonshine. All his brothers made moonshine. None of them drank but one, Uncle Clyde. None of them drank, but they made corn liquor to put food on the table, not mm -hmm. to, you know, buy BMWs and Mercedes and all that crap. They did it to put food on the table. Right. And so, and it was an era of time that I bet everybody's relative. Somebody made moonshine. But it was not of evil or of, it wasn't something bad to harm anybody. Today's drug dealers are making meth in their bathroom with their kids using the same bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've talked to kids who said, yeah, daddy makes it up under the sink, the back bathroom. And you're like, what? Are you kidding me? They're doing this in front of kids and we wonder what's wrong with today's children. Yeah, exactly. It's the parents of today. Yeah, well, Satan's having a field day. With Satan it. is loving it. He wants to separate families because God loves families. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's causing turmoil with those families because mm -hmm. of what's happening. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and we have got to stand up and say enough. Exactly. Enough. Yeah. It's got to stop. Now, when y'all delivered food on Saturday, okay, you take food to 12 families, because I had talked to somebody who had done that a few weeks ago, and they said they actually delivered food to somebody who doesn't have electricity. There are some, all the ones that we delivered to did, but there are some that, uh, that struggle, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you can tell they struggle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and you would think, you know, maybe you would be in another area of the country instead of within the city limits of ball ground. Right. Right. But but these are precious precious people, and they look forward to you coming by, and I look forward to to praying with them. You mm -hmm. know, if someone mm -hmm. is like in bad health, then uh, we prayed with him, and uh, he remembered the prayer, and I'm still praying for him. So that's another opportunity to reach out and touch people. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, we take them the food, we take them our prayers as well. And that's what each of us, 
doesn't matter what your monetary status is, we all have the ability to do something for somebody else. Exactly right. I mean, there's one lady here that uh, we noticed her grass hadn't been cut, and we said, you know, do you have anyone to cut your grass? And they said, no. How about neighbors? No, not really. So we're going to go cut her grass this week mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and do that for her. And she was so appreciative that we offered that, and we're going to do that. Right. So they used a go. little thing for us, but a big thing for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she didn't reach out to anybody because possibly there's nobody who could help her. Right, exactly. Because you know? so she wouldn't want her grass to look like that. No, not so, at all. No, not no. at all. But she couldn't do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There so, you go. Yeah. There you go. So we reach out one more time. Exactly. Now, for people to pick up your book, where do they go? To Amazon? Well, you can go to Amazon. It's on Amazon. Or you can get it from you. Yeah, I keep maybe, you know, 25 or 30 copies at my house if you live in and around Ball Ground or. Jasper or Canton or whatever you can uh, I can meet you somewhere bring it to you but you can go online uh, at Amazon and just put in under books God keeps showing up Michael E. Smith it's lessons from life and it's uh, it's twenty dollars and uh, there's no tax involved and uh, they get it to you I think pretty quick I think if you got prime there's no shipping <laughs> Well, I can't wait to read it. it. It's so weird because we all are looking for the answer to why did this happen to me and did I deserve this and why, you know, and we've all asked why a million times, but when I, I didn't get to see my sister during the time she was going through this, but Thursday night after she got the good news from the doctor and we're on the phone, I could see her face in my mind of how she was smiling and laughing and, and, and she just said, she just said, I just felt guilty because I was healed and somebody else wasn't. And she said, I kept saying, God, why are you blessing me? Why are you blessing me? Well, we had that happen because when my son went back down to chemotherapy for many years, we would see other children down there. Mm -hmm. And we'd get to know those children. And we'd go back and then we wouldn't see him anymore. And we'd ask, mm -hmm. what about Bobby? What about Billy? And they said, well, he didn't, he didn't make, make it. it. And then yeah. we thought, well, and we don't understand why, and, and yeah. only God knows why, but that, yeah. that hurts because uh, we don't have answers for that. No, we don't. Only God does. And, and one other thing about the book, and we talk about Scripture, is that I put Scripture with every story because it applies. There's an analogy, a story, a, a baseball story, a, a firefighter story, a church story in there, and there's always Scripture in it. Mm -hmm. We read our Bible, and it happens to me all the time, and I know your viewers have it happen to them. As we read our Bible, we find out that we don't read our Bible, our Bible reads us. Mm -hmm. God will bring up a verse that we need at that mm -hmm. time and that season, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. stage, that storm in our life. Mm -hmm. And as we read it systematically, as we read it, it's happened to me where it'll just jump out and I just stay right there because God's showing me something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For a hard time I'm going through, it just so happens it comes up that day. That's not a coincidence, that's oh, yeah. God. Vicki calls it the lucky dip because she said she will open that Bible and it will be perfect dead on. Now, can you read that, please, for our viewers? If I put my glasses on, I can. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, this is uh, at the very end. It says, when I was 10 years old, I knew who Jesus Christ was, but I didn't know him as my personal Lord and Savior. I knew that if I died, I would not go to heaven because the Bible says that Jesus is the only way. So with a simple childlike faith of a 10-year-old boy who was lost as a baseball in high weeds, I asked Jesus to come into my heart. It was the happiest day of my life. If you've never made that decision, I pray you would consider making it now. The choice we make about Jesus determines where we'll spend eternity. The Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Paul tells us the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I pray if you haven't made that decision that you make it today, right now. If you're not sure, make sure. God bless you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And you know, um, our program is live now and then it will re-air at 6 p.m., it will re-air at 1 a.m. And in, in all the years of doing television, I, I met a couple years ago and, and precious, precious, oh my gosh, so precious. When um, she was the one that took care of him and then she came down with Alzheimer's and I was interviewing them on their 65th wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. 
And I was sitting there thinking, God, why did you do this to them? God, why? She was the one that kept it together. She was the one that did it all. He ended up, um, it, it was a sad, sad situation, but it was God's plan. You Boy. know, it was God's plan, and she was gone in such a short time. But I can still to this day see the creases she put in his Levi's. <laughs> and I used to be in awe of her because I would go like, Evelyn, oh my gosh, you put creases in his Levi's still. Oh my gosh. You know? <laughs> and she was everything to him. Right, exactly. They yeah. met and they got married two weeks after they met. And they were married 65 years. That was a quick relationship. It was a quick relationship. And I interviewed them on multiple times. And then when it came down to the Alzheimer's, I sat there and said, God, why? God, why? Why didn't you let them just hold hands and die together? Why didn't you, you know? But it was his perfect plan. Right. And we don't understand that. And we, we want don't. this side of heaven. No, you know, no. Even though we try, we can just ask God, give me a piece about it because I don't understand mm -hmm. why you did it. Yeah, yeah. It's tough. It is tough. And, and when we face things, and um, it, it was like when Evelyn was telling me about the accident Saturday that killed the young man, and, 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 we, and I'm like, why did that happen? You know, I mean, the guy plows into him from the rear, truck burst into flames. They have to go tell the wife, the two little kids, why does that happen? There's a reason down the road. It is, and, uh, and, and maybe we don't find that reason until we get on the other side in, mm -hmm. in heaven. Maybe then we won't know, but things will be so different then. I mean, God is going to make things right mm -hmm. at one day. Did your parents tell you as a young child that the end is coming? The end is coming and you better be ready. No, they never, they never really did. They trusted Christ. I know when I uh, was saved, and I just referred to that, we had a revival, and I was 10, and the evangelist that was leading the revival came, and we prayed, and they thought I was going to go down and make that decision during that week, and I was holding on to the pews. I just, for some reason, couldn't. And then Saturday night, I didn't go, and the revival was over, and then Sunday morning, I still hadn't gone down, but then our regular pastor came back that Sunday morning, and the Holy Spirit convicted me so much that Sunday morning that I felt like I was the only guy in the entire worship center. Wow. And as soon as I gave the invitation, the first word, the first out of the hymn, man, I went down and I gave my heart to Christ. That was the mm -hmm. happiest day of my life. So they never told me this is the end. They just trusted that God would allow the Holy Spirit to convict me. And that's what happens to all of us. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. get that conviction mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because he woos us. He mm -hmm. woos us. Mm -hmm. And then we make that decision, and it's a choice. We can make the choice to reject him or accept him. And so we just trust Christ that, uh, and thankful that he convicts us so we can make that decision. Do you remember the song that was playing that morning? It's probably Just As I Am. <laughs> That's yes, that really was great. mine. Yeah. I can tell you the moment, the time, the hour, just as I am. And I get every Sunday when I look on my schedule and we're not singing just as I am, yeah. A little bit of bitterness comes out yeah. in me because I'm like, I think it ought to be sung every Sunday. And I stepped out <laughs> when they said just. When they said just, I was headed down. And I was the only guy that went down there. Oh, wow. I and my love grandmother that song. was there and my aunt was there. And that made it really special. Oh, wow. How precious. How yeah. precious. That was a great day. How precious. Now, if people want you to come and speak to groups, I know that you're a volunteer firefighter, mm -hmm. Cherokee County. Yeah. You're busy, busy, busy. You're a chaplain for Cherokee County. Well, Cherokee County, uh, a volunteer firefighter, but but Earth Concrete has corporate chaplains, mm -hmm. and so I'm a chaplain for the Ball Ground, Dawsonville, and Jefferson plant for Earth Concrete. Wow. And I, in a roundabout way, got into that from a friend that I uh, pointed to Christ back in 1970. He's been a minister for 30 years. Uh, he was down in Mexico. He called me and said, I can't get to Ball Ground. There's been a tragedy. I know you're not a chaplain, but I know you know the Lord. Can you go meet with this young man who's been involved with it? Mm -hmm. I said, I sure will. The next day I went and I spoke with him. I prayed with him. And from that, I became a chaplain. Mm -hmm. It took the necessary training to become a chaplain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was another, it's another Jabez moment. It's how God enlarged my territory. Mm -hmm. Started praying that prayer back in the year 2000. And he just keeps bringing people. I'm here, mm -hmm. right here because oh, of yeah. the Jabez. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. he enlarged my territory. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it will get large because once you go on YouTube, it will really get large. Well, that's an opportunity just to share Christ. Mm -hmm. And and that's the whole thing. There'll be somebody who clicks on tonight who says, I wonder what song she played today. 
Well, they'll hear the song, mm -hmm. but then they'll hear a message too. Right. And you have to bring them in with whatever it takes to capture that audience because there's somebody sitting out there who has never walked that aisle, never mm -hmm. knelt at that altar. There's somebody well, sitting out there. Exactly. Well, that's what Paul did, you know, in the New Testament. He became like them to draw them in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He knew how to talk their talk, and he mm -hmm. would bring them in, then he'd share Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah, well, when we were going through Bible names and, and names for this baby, Ansley had chosen Zanna, and Dawn looked it up, and in Hebrew it means God's gift. Mm -hmm. And not everybody knows the whole story of this and and it just we knew and we kept going round and round with names and it was like it was a it was a war really in the hospital because it's like Don wanted this I wanted this Ansley wanted this and Ansley held her ground and she's the mom after all so Zanna was it and then we kept saying and Don said well mom she was right because it means God's gift every single day of our life is God's gift to us. Exactly. And Amen. we have an opportunity to change somebody's life. We have an opportunity to be nice to somebody. We have an opportunity to degrade people, to treat them horribly, and to be Satan's, Satan's child. And, right. and that is our choice. That is our choice. How do you handle that everyday situation in the grocery store? How do you handle? And, and I used to be, I'm a little bit of a speed demon. And if I would get behind somebody slow, <laughs> and now I just kind of pull over and go around them and look at them like, okay. But maybe they're having a hard day. Maybe exactly. they've got something on their mind. Yeah, we don't know, you know what they're going through. We don't know what they're going through. You know, and, and you talk about gifts, God's gifts to us. But the thing that I really concentrate on is the fact that, you know, we're given a gift as believers in Christ. Mm -hmm. And one day we're going to go one-on-one -on -one with Christ. He's going to ask us, what did you do with the gift that I gave mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. And we've got to answer that, mm -hmm. answer the question. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to say, oh, I never shared you. I never told people what you did in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I want to, Irma Bombeck mm -hmm. always said what she wanted to tell Christ when he asked that question was, well, Jesus, I used it all up. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I used every bit of it. I don't have anything left. The gift you gave me, I passed out to everybody. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's how we want to answer. That's it. That's it. And, and laughter truly is that medicine that will bring you from the deepest, darkest, point of your life. I was I was sharing with somebody the other day because she said, I don't know how to handle my daughter's death. And I said, I will tell you how I handled it. And I took two weeks of being in a dark closed room and crying and praying and asking God why, 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 why didn't the bullet jam? Why didn't this? Why you know, I asked a million questions. Then I accepted his choice. Mm -hmm. And that was the hardest thing ever because I'm like, God, I'm accepting that this was of you, but I don't understand why. Yeah, I, I don't understand it. Well, I think so many times we, we look and we say that there's an intended will and an allowable will. God didn't intend for that to happen, but for whatever reason, mm -hmm. whatever reason, he allowed it to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we don't know. When the policemen were at my door, she was still alive, but certainly not. And... Um, Within 15 minutes, we got the call that she had gone, and um, and and I just and and I felt so bad for the young police officer who had to tell me he had known my daughter all of his life mm -hmm. because he went to pre-K with my granddaughter, oh, okay. and for him to be standing at my door at 3, 50, 3:50, whatever time it was, and and delivering that to me, I felt bad for him because he had to witness the scene, he had to be there. And I've always thought, how did he handle it? How did he go through right. it? Because it wasn't just me, the mom. It was the young police officer who'd known her forever who walked into a violent scene. And, and you just, you know, it's not just about us. It's about the people around well, us. Well, you're right. I mean, with uh, with firefighters, they have a higher suicide rate oh my than, gosh, than yes. law enforcement yes. officers. Yes. And, and what, you know, you see as a first responder uh, is very, very hard and some people can't Oh, yeah. That. yeah, yeah, it's absolutely, absolutely. But you know, we all have the ability to pray for each other, and uh, I'm so glad that you, I'm, Jeff. I love you, but I'm glad you took the day off and you got Mike to come because it just it just shared with me that we all have the ability to get out and we can do it. We can't stay in the boat. We've got to get out and do it. If you, you want to, to walk on water, it. you got to get out of the boat. You got to. You, you got know, to. And and, and if, when we do. We can do extraordinary things through his strength within us. That's it. I That's mean, it. Peter was not a loser. 
when he got out and started sinking, the losers were in the boat. Mm -hmm. They had the L's Sitting on there the watching, going, hmm. yeah. <laughs> I don't but trust. I don't trust. I don't yeah. trust. But, you know, the thing about it was he had, the, he had the, the courage to get out. He had the faith to walk. But then fear took him down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, the, the only difference between fear and faith is focus. Mm -hmm. What are we focused on? Mm -hmm. As long as he was focused on Christ, he was walking on water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if we take our and eyes off Christ. And the minute he doubted. He went down. And so will we if we take our eyes off Christ. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't look at the storm. Look at, and the thing about it was that Peter said, hey, I'd rather be with Jesus in the storm mm -hmm. than be in the boat without him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a storm to be with Christ, that's where we want to be because mm -hmm. he's not going to leave us. It's our choice. Okay, can, can we give out your phone number if sure. somebody wanted to sure. reach out? Yeah, it's 770-634-4682. There you go. Pick up the phone and call this man and get him to come to your business, your community, your whatever, what kind of meet and greet you're having. Get him to speak, get him to encourage, and then pick up a copy of his book, God Keeps Showing Up. I'm so excited. I have something to sit on the porch and read now. Yay, 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 yay. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you. And we didn't mention your beautiful wife, Diane, that I've just, she glows. She just glows. She's so beautiful. I keep so. my coverage. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And y'all are on a pickleball team? Yeah, pickleball team. Uh, we play up here in Jasper and, and ball ground and different places, mm -hmm. and it's good cardio exercise for yeah. young and old. Yeah, yeah. Fun, fun, fun. So we enjoy so, that. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Thank you for being here today. Well, thank you And for again, pick me. up a copy of his book. It's God Keeps Showing Up, and I can guarantee you he does keep showing up. Right now, he's going to show up in the form of a song because we're going to leave you with one of the uh, amazing songs off of a gospel CD done by Mr. Ella J himself, Dwight Sanford. So I want you to sit back now and just listen and reflect and uh, then, you know, you go to your Bible and you pick up something and you look and you will find a verse that will suit exactly what's happening in your life today. I'll see you again tomorrow only on ETC.